Uh, I want to get into this conversation about China. So first and foremost, uh, for those of you that are not familiar, I'm going to play a quick video that gives you some insight and information on what's going on with this whole BRICS situation uh, with uh, Chinese allegedly trying to devalue and get rid of um, the U.S. dollar as uh, the main form of currency, the, the main form of currency that the world then depends on. Uh, again, hit a like for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications. Thanks Welcome to the me. show, former Utah Times with Jason Chaffetz and Forbes Media Chair and Editor-in-Chief Steve Forbes. Okay, first to you, Steve. The president not commenting. He's now on a tour of 20 states talking jobs. More and more polls show the Biden White House is failing with voters. Voters. Thank you for the super chats. I appreciate you, Jessica. Definitely going to be reading it throughout the show, love don't like what he's doing. The majority don't like it. The majority worried about inflation. The majority say he's dishonest. Steve, are they ready for this? China is now trying to replace the U.S. dollar uh, with their currency in global trade. What do you think of that story, uh, Steve? Well, China's several years has made very clear, along with the Russians, they want to downgrade the dollar because they think that'll enhance their power around the world. And certainly the way we've treated the dollar over the year has gone in that direction. However, people are not going to trust the Chinese yuan. You may get these one-off deals like they're doing with the French, but China does not have real capital markets. China has capital controls. And so in terms of currency, people are going to prefer the dollar to the yuan. And uh, so in that, in that sense, uh, I think uh, we've got some time to get our house in order. And that 20-state tour you're talking about with uh, Joe Biden, that shows how utterly out of touch he and his team are in terms of the economy, proclaiming that even though people are feeling that things are not going well, they say things are just fine, shows how utterly out of touch they are with reality. Talk about the ultimate bubble. That tour is it. Yeah. So first and foremost, let's address a couple things as being communicated, right? Uh, China is the main player here, all right? China is the main player here. Now, there's no need, in my personal opinion, not a financial advisor, so this is my personal opinion, there's no need in consumers sitting there worrying and starting to panic as a result of what's being communicated across the board uh, as far as this whole BRICS or China looking to replace the U.S. dollar as the main currency, the, the yuan. OK, the more important thing that you really need to start paying attention to is what who are the players? Why are they playing it this way? And then why are they incentivized to do so? A, China. China's main enemy is the United States of America. Why? Because the United States of America has more influence and power on what's going on across the entire world because we have a stronger military and military presence. The thing that makes a company a country great. The first foundational thing that makes a country great is not how financially sound it is, not how how they how they move from a financial perspective. It's how strong is your military? The reason why we pump literally hundreds of billions of dollars every single year into our military is because that is what stabilizes what happens from a worldwide perspective. It is not the money that you make. It is not any of that. It is your military prowess, and that is the thing that stabilizes or instills fear, which then allows for you to do every single thing or every other thing that happens throughout the world. The thing that you're able to impress upon other people is your military might. That's what creates the partnerships. The financial stability is the thing that incentivizes it afterwards. But your military is the thing that determines whether or not countries or or anywhere else is going to acquiesce over into whatever it is that you're doing because it provides a form of stability across the board, okay? At a very basic level, it's your military. I know a lot of people like to sit here and they complain and they say, listen, why are they pumping all of this money into the military when they can be fixing homelessness? We can't afford not to. We can't afford not to. It is a global game. It is not about what it is that you think about in your own personal neighborhood. It is a global game. Secondly, we do not, in my opinion, have the right leader and the president of the United States and Joe Biden and then as his vice president, Kamala Harris, to effectively combat what it is that we see as being essentially a chess move by China. Now, you talk about Russia. 
you talk about Brazil and there is a picture that shows up and I use it as a cover photo saying that the world has left left most black people behind. Uh, there is a picture of all of them holding hands, right? Uh, first of all, Brazil is a piece of shit. Okay. Just to be frank, Brazil's economy and financial prowess is literally in shambles. They're reaching for anybody that will grab their hand that will allow for them to continue to have any kind of say so on what happens from a worldwide perspective. But the one thing that Brazil has is resources. And so what China is doing, similar to exactly what it is that they're doing in Russia, because Russia is so weak because they underestimated how long or what was going to happen in Ukraine. What China is doing is it's leveraging its financial prowess in order to extract resources from their other three partners. And then what it also does is it helps to destabilize the U.S. dollar, which allows for a financial war. What have I always said to y'all? What have I always said to y'all? I said, if you ever want to understand what's going on in your neighborhood, what's going on in your marriage, what's going on in the economy, what's going on in your U.S. politics, you want to understand what's going on worldwide, you have to understand how it comes back to the money, right? China's economy is on the verge of an upturn and a collapse, and they can't even get their own housing market in order because they've overbuilt, but they don't have any real stability when it comes to providing people the opportunity to really, really become successful by providing a strong middle class, which is the thing that then powers most economies. So what you see is a lot of instability over in China, but they still have financial prowess and they've grown to the point to where they have enough of a middle class and a, and a, and a big enough population to where they can start to make an impact because they still have military prowess over there also. And so they're leveraging their resources to continue to invest in other countries. What do they do when they invest in other countries? They then say, okay, Russia, you have resources that we need. You have energy. We need energy. So what we need to do is partner in order to continue to have this war against the United States of America, similar to Brazil. So when you start to make these assessments, it's not just a war against the U.S. It's how is it that we can benefit from these partnerships because none of us are strong enough to be able to take on what it is that we don't like by ourselves. Let me continue to play this video a little bit, and then I'm going to go over to the Patrick Bet David. To what Steve just said, Jason, just factually, we, you know, talking to economists on Wall Street and in Washington, when they, they keep saying that they, you know, they don't want to be named in the quote, but they keep saying this might be one of the worst presidencies, presidencies we've seen in the modern era. This is one of the worst uh, White Houses they've ever had to deal with. They collapsed the border, record inflation, 40 percent all in under this White House, and just, you know, more problems for the American people than they expected, Jason. Yeah, the problem, though, is they think they're doing a great job. And after the 2022 election, Joe Biden said he was not going to change his trajectory and what he's doing. But I think the world and certainly the United States sees this projection of weakness. And, and that's why China's on the move. That's why Russia uh, does not feel uh, uh, any pain for the United States. They just took a Wall Street Journal reporter. You got Iran that's developing a, a nuclear weapon. Um, you have Saudi Arabia forming deals with Iran. I mean, there is nothing that the president can point to that is actually going well. The borders go in the wrong direction. Um, you know, prices are up and, and he's such a poor communicator. I mean, that's the thing. He may go on a tour. The answer to our problems is not more cowbell and more Joe Biden. That exacerbates the problem. Yeah. To what? Let me play this other video for y'all and then we're going to get a reaction to it. China and Brazil strike deal to ditch the U.S. dollar. This is yep. a zero hedge story. And, you know, they have reached a deal to trade in their own currencies, bypassing the U.S. dollar. This deal will allow the two countries to conduct their massive trade, which amounts to $150 billion per year, and financial tra uh, transactions directly exchange and want for Rios's, Rios's uh, vice versa. This deal is part of Beijing's latest move against the U.S. dollar, extending its bilateral U.S. dollar attempting currency arrangement beyond countries such as Russia, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, to now include Latin American exporting powerhouse. While we are still strong, long away from the one U.S. dollar as a global reserve currency, the current U.S. ruling regime is destroying the world's faith and confidence, not only in the dollar, but in what was once a superpower in and is increasingly 
a third world banana republic. Tom. So I, I think what most people need to understand, and this is where I think uh, Americans need to step back off headlines and just learn something very, very quickly. And that is 1944, there was something called Brenton Woods. And that's where the U.S. dollar was tied. What he's basically breaking down for you guys is the U.S. dollar has always been backed by uh, resources, specifically gold. Let, let me give you a little bit of a history lesson, okay? What gives you, what gives the dollar its value? What gives the dollar its value? It's a fiat currency. How do you determine what the rate of inflation is? Because before we can even start to have this conversation about what's going on worldwide, you need to understand how fiat currency works. You need to understand what inflation is. What gives the dollar its value, especially compared to every other currency worldwide? A lot of y'all are saying gold, resources, nothing. Ah, I see LaTanya from Colorado. I see LaTanya from Colorado. What gives the dollar its value is your belief in it. When there was a bank run, when there was a bank run, right, and that you've seen what was happening over there at Silicon Valley Bank, and everybody started getting worried, Biden immediately got online and he said, listen, your money is safe. It doesn't even matter about whether or not it's insured by the FDIC, but up to $250,000 per account. He said, your money is safe. In 2008, there was this saying that said that banks are too big to fail. And it's true. Because the dollar itself used to be back. Now, the dollar itself is just fiat currency. It's not even worth the paper that it's printed on. But what gives it its value is our belief in it. And so when I see stupid stuff um, in the comments, for example, somebody said Anton knows his one of his million dollars is going to be $500,000 overnight. Well, most people like me that actually is not a rapper understands that I don't actually keep my money in cash. I'm asset rich, not cash rich. Let me say it again. I'm asset rich, not cash rich. So everything that I do continues to beat the rate of inflation. I'm not like you, right? You have a savings and a checkings, uh, and you like Kevin Hart, you know, see what's going on is the way that my savings and my checking account is set up. We don't do that over here. It's a whole nother different conversation that we having over here, all right? But fiat currency, okay? It used to be backed by resources. So for example, let's take gold and you give the equivalent of what you would say that fiat currency is worth is then backed by the Federal Reserve in order to give it its value. And so that's what created the belief in it for people to be able to trade back and forth so that we can be able to buy food and, and so on and so forth without killing each other, right? It was an easier way for us to trade back and forth and exchange resources in order for us to not kill each other, all right? This is a basic lesson in in inflation fiat currency and what the value of a dollar is right now throughout history what happened was ups downs boom busts mismanagement of resources uh social security is underfunded uh victim olympics programs such as welfare and all of this other type of stuff right mismanagement of funds the whole nine yards and so what happened was in, in order for uh, our federal government to be able to manage it more effectively instead of uh, dealing with it, such as learning how to budget and then keeping inflation in check, what they did was they printed more money because they then realized that after a while, your belief in it was so strong and that the only thing that they had to do was keep inflation down to at least 2.5% or 2 cent, 2%. You're going to have ups, you're going to have downs. But the value of a movie ticket today versus 1980 is completely different. The value of a car today versus 1980 is completely different. The value of the oil and the gas that you use to put in that car is different than it was in 1980. That's where we have inflation. 
That's why we have inflation. So they went to print more money, which is why you then got, and you were excited about, the stimulus checks that you got during the pandemic and during the 08 crisis. And you said, yeah, at least, at least Biden, he gave me some money. At least Obama, he gave me $1,000, $600 per person. They incentivizing me to have kids, so I'm going to have a whole bunch of kids, and I'm going to be on welfare, and so on and so forth, because they continued to print money, which then devalued what the money was worth, because the more of it in circulation, not actually backed by anything, then makes you interdependent on the idea that the value of that dollar is based off of what you believe in it. The minute that people stop believing in our own fiat currency is the minute that it then collapses or the value of it goes down similar to other countries that had hyperinflation. So on a, on a very basic level, on a very basic level, the value of money is not backed by anything, so it's interdependent or dependent on the people to then believe in it, which does not only include you, but it includes the entire world's reserve and that they keep a majority of their resources in the American dollar. So now it turns into not just from you and your neighborhood and whether or not you can go to the store and get some chicken wings, that then inflation was out of control at the equivalent of 8 9 10% over and throughout the pandemic, and you didn't feel like you were feeling it because you were getting a raise on your job, but the raise that you was getting wasn't even keeping up with the rate of inflation, which is why they now saying that minimum wage should be at $20 an hour, right? But on top of that, from a global scale, on a global scale and a global perspective, it affects other countries because they then weigh their current currency and the value of it against the dollar. It is the standard of the world which then brings us over into what it is that we see happening from China partnering with Russia and also Brazil and that they're trying to destabilize the American dollar to then make sure that the world's currency, not from an immediate perspective, this is not something that happens overnight. This is not something that happens right now. This is something that happens years and decades out and that you work very vigilantly as a country to destabilize one's currency in order to give your country more power because you then partner with other countries that then give you resources in order for that level of stability. That is the very basic, very basic thing that I can explain to you as far as what is happening as far as the American dollar, the Chinese yuan, Russia, and then their partnerships across the globe, okay? So when you see these conversations happening, or you see people having conversations in a barbershop and they start talking a bunch of shit and they don't even know the foundation of what's happening, then you can educate them or then you can make a more informed statement because you have a foundation and an understanding of exactly how we got to this point in the first place, okay? So now we have a president. Now we have a president that is managing on all fronts a war in Ukraine, instability in the United States of America, as far as people's confidence and what it is that they see happening with the American dollar and the banking system. And then they throw in a bunch of other things to try to distract you from the real issues of what's going on on a worldwide basis by telling you to focus on Trump getting indicted, uh, abortion rights, transgenders fake shooting up a school, um, Black rights, reparations, all of this other bullshit that y'all stuck on, when in reality you have a much bigger issue that could possibly upend and destabilize what it is that we see happening on a worldwide basis within the next decade or two. Okay, so let's continue to play the video. To gold. In other words, the value of the U.S. dollar was connected to the value of gold. And between Fort Knox and other areas, we had gold reserves. Reading Super Chats throughout the show, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. So the U.S. currency on a global scale was deemed as being valuable, tied to gold, and stable. And in 1944, everyone came to this agreement to say, hey, let's peg the value of our currency to the dollar because the dollar is pegged to gold and it brought international global stability. What did I just explain to y'all? What did I just explain to y'all? 
I just explained to you how the United States of America and the American dollar was able to create stability across the world. Not just within the United States of America, but across the world. So when you see America's debt at 31 trillion, or you see America's inflation at eight, nine, five, six percent, and you see the Federal Reserve trying to raise rates in order to get a hold on inflation, it's not just based off of what the American consumer is going through. It's based off of what it is that they are instilling within the world as far as the confidence in the American dollar, because that is where they they hold a lot of their stability in. They compare their currency in, uh, to the American dollar the same way that the American dollar is supposed to be held in reserves as far as gold. It is a worldwide game. This is not a, just something that is just happening in your little hood and your neighborhood and little Ray Ray and all of them. And this ain't a bag of chips and Doritos that used to cost 25 percent, 25 cent. Now it's a dollar fifty nine and nothing like that. No. This is a bigger game that we are playing. And they not work. Biden is not sitting here worried about what you blackity blacks is talking about in your community. He's he's literally dealing with whether he's admitting it or not, openly or not, something that is much bigger than what we see happening on the surface. And the one thing that he has to do is continue to instill confidence in the American people. And the second thing that he has to do is make sure that he instills confidence in the world that continues to hold the American dollar to a high standard. OK, reading Super Chats throughout the show. Let's continue. It also in created the dollar as the world's reserve currency. Well, what does that mean? That means if you have extra reserves and you bought them in dollars, they were stable because they were tied to the gold. Now, Nixon, and we can talk about what you just referenced a minute ago, was Nixon taking us off the gold standard 72, 73, which had nothing to do with the Vietnam War and political instability in the economy at that time. I agree. It was deeper. Yeah. I, I'm with you. Yeah. It was deeper reasons. That was the front excuse. The right now, you know what the average is right now on world reserves? 62% right. of countries' reserves are held in U.S. dollars. 62% of the world, not, not, not Canada, not Mexico, 62% of the world's reserves, the entire world reserves, is held in the American dollar. Now, that is not something that China can just come in and upend overnight. That is something that they have to continue to work towards and erode over a period of time. You know how you wanted that chick in high school and she wasn't checking for you and then she went over there over to the drug dealer and then after the drug dealer bust her down and everybody ran a train on her and then throughout the years once she had babies and stuff and she no longer was uh the top of the food chain but you still looked at her in a certain type of way because you hadn't seen her in a while right the way that you view her and the way that the world views her is completely different erosion over time then made her available to you because she became less valuable <laughs> i'm breaking it down from a c student's perspective see listen if you just talk about it from a money perspective most people is not going to get it. But when you start to equate it in pictures and videos and you start equating it to women, then people are like, ah, I got it now. I got it now. Ah, I got it. I got it. I got it now. The value that you seen her versus the value that she actually have to the rest of the world is completely different. I should rename this to erosion, not pressure. I should rename this live stream to erosion, not pressure. No? All right, let me stop. This ain't a relationship talk. This is, this is we talking about the American dollar here. All right, let's continue. 62% right now. And so even though we went off the gold standard, we're the reserve currency. So people see the United States currency as very stable. That's what's important. And what we're seeing here is the yuan, do everybody here is the yuan. And well, that's a unit of measure. The actual currency in China is called the renminbi. That's their dollar. Dollar equals renminbi, yuan is like a unit. And so what they want is they wanna slowly, remember China plays a long game. They wanna slowly replace the dollar as the world's reserve currency. Slowly, erosion. Slowly have one penis enter this woman, and then over time, it's another, and then it's another, and then it's another, and then she take a plan B, 
and that plan B cost her like seventy, eighty dollars, and then they take another, and then she go over to Planned Parenthood, and the next thing you know, her womb is ruined, and then she get another D, and then another D, and then she take another D, and then she can't unsee what it is that she saw prior to being with you and so she measures you against every other man and then she's ruined for life and now y'all got a trauma bond in order for y'all to have a relationship this is the this is what erosion is okay listen i know that they told y'all in school that the definition of erosion uh is completely different than the way that i explained it but i have to give it to you from a real dude's perspective or from a c student's perspective because how i see things and what the definitions say is a completely different conversation. All right, make sure y'all stay tuned in. Hit a like for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. All right, erosion. That's the name of the game. Let's continue. Because, Will they succeed? Huh? Will they succeed? Well, they're taking one step at a time, and they're starting with African nations that they put into. By the way, you can also go study mercantilism, where you come in and you take all the resources, and then you sell them back things that are made mm -hmm. out of the resources. So China is in an active state right now of assisting many small regional Latin American and African nations on deals that are intentionally going to go bad and then leave them with the collateralization of the country they've just pillaged so what does that mean when we say that they're actually buying up africa and china and, um all this type of stuff right what, what are we talking about when we say that they're over there china knows that they're loaning money and giving money to nations and resources that eventually will balloon to the point to where they can't pay them back this is not a secret when somebody gives somebody a bad deal, the goal isn't to necessarily extract the resources. We know that you can't pay it back. The goal is to then own your resources. Because it's not about the amount of money that I gave you. That amount of money doesn't have the same value to me as the resources that you're standing on. And so what China is doing is that they're starting small and they're infiltrating these different countries that don't even understand the value of the land that they're standing on. And so they give them things. It's almost the same way that um, when America was invaded and then, you know, when they started to try to figure out exactly what the Indians uh were, were finding valuable when they were trying to figure out what the Indians were finding valuable uh, that's the way in which they were able to unsurp them and then take over their land ultimately and then move them over in a lot of instances over to lands and places that were uh, uninhabitable or less than less than stellar when it comes to these Indian reservations that these uh, Indians now are on if y'all ever been to an indian reservation a lot of these indian re reservations they fucked up they own a lot of casinos but it'd be fucked up in them indian reservations it's fucked up but the point that i'm making is that uh, if you want to take over something then you give them something that's less valuable to you but that you know that over time will eventually prevent them from being able to pay it back so that you can then take their land from them and then ultimately you extract the resources from that land. And so long term, if somebody doesn't stand up long term, sure, China could be successful because they're playing this not the way the West plays it. The West has played the game in terms of history, in terms of regimes, a regime of leadership. China is playing this long term in terms of, of decades. Dynasties. So, Tom, Charlie, what, what, do you, what, what are you role, thinking? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, I, I agree. I think the dollar, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit a flat line because Germany, South Korea, and Japan are not going to drop the dollar as the world reserve currency. And especially Germany and Japan, uh, they, pr they produce a lot of value and a lot of wealth. And so the euro backstopping the world reserve currency, meaning the, the dollar being the backstop of the euro, is actually in our benefit. But 
India is going to be the big question, right? If India falls, mm -hmm. that's a growing market. Yep. Brazil is a totally corrupt country. They're a broken country. The bulls on Brazil have been wrong the last 20 years. It's like a trillion dollar GDP. You could fact check me on it. They're mainly a natural resource hub, and they have a real hard time with their own homegrown industry. And there was like 1.6 trillion, I was about right. Uh, it's actually flatlined and gone down in recent years. So the bulls on Brazil have been wrong. And with Lula now becoming president, they're gonna become a wholly owned colony of the Chinese Communist Party. Basically, that's what Brazil- Catastrophic for the nation, It's by terrible. The, way. Yeah. No, the, the future of Brazil is put in permanent jeopardy because of Bolsonaro not be, you know, staying as president, prime minister. And everybody thought BRIC through the 90s was just an acronym for emerging Developing, nations. Yes. You know, Brazil, Russia, India, China. It wasn't. It was a coalition over there that wanted to undermine U.S. authority on That's a global right. trade basis. So we the interesting thing about it is that um, from my perspective, I think that India uh, is probably the most important piece in this entire puzzle that we put together, honestly. I think that India's economy, India's growing population, um, even a lot of the manufacturing is starting to move over into India. Everybody's paying attention to Russia. Everybody's paying attention to China. Everybody's looking at Brazil's partnership with India, with, with uh, China and Russia. Nobody is paying attention to India. Nobody's paying attention to India. India is the piece or the key piece in all of this, in my opinion. But neither here nor there. We'll keep an eye on it.